most people think adding first name as a variable to an email is personalization. Let me show you why that won't cut it. In this video, I'll break down how to automate hyper-personalized cold emails at scale without spending a fortune. You'll see exactly how I extract deep company insights, filter out the noise and generate outreach that feels 100% human written while running fully on autopilot. And I'm not just talking about scraping home pages and calling it a day. That's surf level stuff. If you really want high response rates, more booked calls and better conversions, you need to go deeper. I'll show you three different methods from a basic approach to an expensive but unreliable solution. And finally, the perfect workflow that gets you highly relevant insights for free at scale. Before we dive in, I want to quickly mention that you can download all of these workflows I'll be showing in my school community. I share every single automation I personally use, lead generation workflows, email templates, business SOPs, and other NATN automations, all built for people who take cold outreach seriously. So if you are serious about landing your first clients, growing your pipeline, and scaling without wasting time on manual work, be sure to check it out. But all right, let's jump into the first workflow. This workflow is as simple as it gets. It scrapes only the company homepage of a company's website, generates a summary and fills in basic personalization variables for a gold email. It is quick, it is cheap, and it is easy to set up, but let's be real, it is also basic as hell. If you're looking for true hyper personalization, using this workflow alone won't cut it. For today's showcase, I'll use Skillstack as an example. You can see that the homepage contains some information, but not the deeper insights we need. If we really want hyper-personalization, the valuable details are probably hidden in places like the About Us page, the case studies, and the Why You Need Skillstack section. These are the pages that actually tell something meaningful about the company. Insights that let us craft an email that doesn't sound like a generic cold pitch. But since this workflow only scrapes the homepage, we won't have access to any of that yet. I already ran the workflow, so let me show you what we got. The workflow is triggered by a webhook, and then we have an Airtable node. Airtable is where I store all my leads. You can use any CRM that supports a webhook, but I prefer Airtable because it automates everything for me. For example, whenever I go into my Airtable, and I check the start enrichment box in Airtable, it automatically triggers this workflow. No need to manually copy and paste record IDs. Moving back to N8N, after the Airtable node, we have an HTTP request node. What this HTTP request node does is it fetches the HTML from the homepage I just showed you. The problem is that the response is filled with junk code, JavaScript, CS, and metadata that we really don't need. As you can see, it is bloated, inefficient, and a waste of tokens if we would send it straight to an AI model. To fix this, we use a code node. This code node cleans up the raw HTML by stripping away all of the unnecessary code and leaving us with only the plain text, as you can see on the output side. Filtering the raw HTML has two big advantages. First, it saves AI processing costs since we're only sending the essential text, meaning we don't send as many tokens. Second, it makes the text readable. If you ever need to check the output manually, we can easily see what's on the page. The filtered output on the right side is what we'll be using in the next step. Now that we have clean text, we send it to an LLM node that generates a company summary. This prompt tells the AI to give us a general overview but since we only scraped the homepage, it is still very shallow. We're missing deeper context, like what the company actually specializes in and any case studies or success stories or their core product for differentiators. That's why this approach is so limited. The result is that the company's name and industry can easily be found, but when it comes to finding key insights for outreach, it is just too generic since it doesn't have access to real insights that make personalization work which means our outreach will still sound generic and doesn't set us apart from all the other cold emails filling their inbox. So here is the issue. This workflow is better than nothing, but if you're looking to stand out, it isn't enough. The obvious solution to you might be scraping the entire website, but as you'll see in the next workflow, that comes with its own problems. 
the second workflow connects to a website crawler from Apify, which can click on links, navigate through an entire website and scrape all the pages it finds. That may sound like an ideal solution. After all, instead of just scraping the homepage, we get access to everything. But in reality, it's an expensive and somewhat inefficient mess. Let's take a look at the Apify scraper settings. Here we can set restrictions like max crawling depth or max pages. Max crawling depth controls how many links away from the main URL the crawler is allowed to go. And max pages is very straightforward. It sets a limit to the total number of pages it can scrape. The problem is that even with these settings, you can't really steer the crawler in the direction you want. It doesn't know which pages contain valuable information for cold outreach. So it scrapes whatever it finds, sometimes useful pages, but more often than not, completely irrelevant ones. Let's test it out by running the scraper on the same website we used in the previous example. This will take a few minutes, so I'll see you once it's finished. Now that the run is complete, let's take a look at Apify. You can see that the actor ran successfully, how long the crawl took and how much it cost us. The cost alone highlight the first problem. It is not instant and the costs add up quickly, even for scraping a single website, or in this case, only five pages. Since we have no real control over which pages were scraped, we've essentially paid 14 cents to extract a large amount of data without knowing if it's useful. Now let's switch back over to N8N and go over what happened. So once again, the leads information was extracted by the Airtable node. Then we move on to the first HTTP node. This HTTP node is what triggered the Apify scraper and it waited for the data set to be ready before completing. Now that the data set is available, we can exactly see which URLs were scraped. If you look on the right side, you can see that it scraped the main web page. It scraped the beta test agreement page, the privacy policy page, and lastly, the opt out page. And this is where the second major issue appears because many of these pages, well, all of them, essentially besides the home page, are completely irrelevant. So instead of focusing on useful sections like case studies or solution pages, the crawler picked up things like legal disclaimers, privacy policies, and blog archives. Since we didn't have a way to direct the scraper toward high value pages, we've ended up with a data set full of noise, which now requires extra processing to extract anything useful. This means we're not only paying for the scraper, but also for AI processing that will have to sift through a lot of unnecessary unwanted information. Now, since the crawler outputs multiple pages separately, we need to merge all of them into a single item before processing. And that is where this next code node comes in. It takes all the separate responses and merges them into one. You could also use an aggregate node for this, but I prefer this method because it gives me more flexibility later on in the workflow. Once we have merged the pages, we have another problem, just like in the previous workflow, the one above. The scraped data includes a ton of unnecessary code like JavaScript styling and random metadata. That is why we use another code node here, which cleans up the HTML and extracts just the plain text. Well, it cleans up most of the HTML. If we skip this step, we'd be sending bloated, unreadable data to the AI making it way more expensive and even more inefficient to process. After filtering the text, we move on to the two LLM nodes. These are exactly the same as in the previous workflow. The first one generates a company summary based on everything that was scraped. Since we now have multiple pages, the AI has a more complete picture of the company, but the issue is because we have no control over what the crawler scraped, the results can be very mixed. In this case, it didn't really retrieve any information from relevant web pages. So sometimes you get great results, while other times the AI ends up summarizing completely irrelevant pages because those were included in the scraped data. The second LLM node then tries to extract personalization variables from the summary. But again, the results depend entirely on whether the right pages were scraped. If the crawler happens to pick up useful pages, the AI can find strong personalization details. 
if it's straight, the wrong pages, we're stuck with useless generic insights. And that is the biggest issue with this workflow. Since we can't control which pages get scraped, the results are very inconsistent. One run might give us great information while the next might be full of junk. On top of that, it is slow and expensive to run, making it completely unscalable for high volume outreach. So while this method technically gives us access to deeper insights, it's unreliable, costly, and inefficient. There has to be a better way to scrape only the most relevant pages while keeping costs low. And that is exactly what the final workflow solves. This is the best method, fully automated, as good as free and highly accurate, unlike the previous workflow. It doesn't crawl an entire website randomly and hope for the best. Instead, it follows a structured process to extract only the most valuable information while keeping the costs low. It starts in the same way as the previous workflows. The lead is retrieved from our CRM, in this case, Airtable. The first node after the Airtable node scrapes the homepage of the website. The next node removes the HTML from the page, leaving us with just the plain text. So for those paying attention, up until this point, the third workflow is identical to the first one, but here's where it takes a more advanced approach. Inside the HTML from the homepage are all the navigation links leading to other important pages on the website. Pages like About Us, Solutions, Case Studies, Customer Stories, you name it. These are the pages that contain insights that we actually need for deep personalization. If I quickly go back to the skills tag website, the links I'm talking about are the ones that can be found here in the header. So the about platform, why you need skills tag, customer stories, and even blog posts. So to filter these navigation links from the HTML, we use a code node. This code node extracts all the URLs from the homepage HTML, filtering out any unnecessary links and leaving only the ones relevant for navigation. When we check the output on the right side, we can see that these URLs match exactly with the links in the header on the homepage. You can see about us, platform, and rich, you name it. Now that we have all the internal links, we need a way to determine which ones are actually useful for cold outreach. Instead of scraping all of these, which would be 50 of them, which would still be inefficient, we use an LLM to decide which pages matter most. The challenge here is that the LLM needs all the URLs as a single input. So before we send it through, we use another code node to format them into one structured item. This ensures that the AI can analyze all the links at once and pick the most relevant ones. You can see that 50 items are turned into one item by this simple code. Now let's move on to the LLM node. The prompt is designed to filter out irrelevant pages and prioritize the ones that will give us the best insights for cold email personalization. We're specifically looking for case studies, about us pages, solution pages, and anything that explains what the company does in detail. Let's check the output. As you can see, the AI has selected three URLs that make the most sense for outreach. It's selected about platform and data agnostic lead enrichment, something probably very specific for this company. This step alone makes this method far more efficient than the Apify approach, because instead of blindly scraping an entire website, we're only focusing on the most valuable pages determined by AI. Now we have three selected URLs. We need to scrape them individually. To do this, we first split them into separate items. You can see that the LLM outputted them as one item and we use a split out node to split them into three separate items so we can make three separate HTTP requests. Let me quickly show you inside of this HTTP request node what I've done as or what I've filled in as an expression to find the right page of the website. So I've used the domain from the lead source all the way at the beginning, the first node, and I've simply added the part of the URL which was determined by the AI to be relevant, which in this case was dash about amongst others. Since we are dealing with multiple pages again, we need to merge them back into one structured response. In this case, I use an aggregate node here, which takes the three pages and turns them into one item. After that, we run another code node to filter out unnecessary HTML once again and extract only the clean text. 
This is the same process we used for the home page earlier, but now we're doing it for three additional pages, ensuring we only send high quality input to the large language model. At this point, we have everything we need to generate a highly detailed company profile. The first LLM node takes the information from the three pages, including the home page, to generate a full company summary. Unlike the earlier workflows I showed, this AI model has access to much more context, so it can write a deeper, more meaningful summary. Here you can see the summary now includes information from different sources, making it much more comprehensive. The final step is extracting the variables. Once again, the second LM node takes the summary from the previous one and pulls out the key details we need to personalize cold email. Once again, since the previous LLM has access to multiple sources of information, it can now generate unique and relevant insights instead of generic placeholders. And this is what makes an email really stand out. This approach is not only highly effective, but also as good as free. By controlling exactly which pages we scrape, we avoid unnecessary API costs. We reduce processing time and ensure we're only working with valuable data. Unlike Apify, which blindly scrapes an entire site, this method gives us full control for what we extract, making it the best solution for scalable, high quality personalization. So to wrap things up, let's go over the three workflows one last time. The first method was the basic homepage scraper. It is fast, cheap, and easy to set up, but it only scrapes the homepage. So the insights are shallow. If you're looking for quick and simple personalization, it does work, but it won't set you apart from the competition. The second method was the full website crawler using Apify. This one scrapes an entire website, which does sound great in theory, but in reality, it is expensive, unpredictable, and scrapes way too many irrelevant pages, as I showed you. You end up paying a lot for AI to process useless data, making it a bad choice for large scale outreach. And then there's the third method, the smart AI powered scraper. This is by far the best approach because it's highly accurate. It is scalable and it's basically free, as I said, because instead of blindly crawling an entire website, it extracts all the internal links from the homepage, lets AI filter out the most relevant ones and scrapes only those pages. This gives you the best possible insights for cold email personalization while keeping your costs extremely low. If you are serious about cold outreach that actually convert, this is the method you should be using. And if you want to get your hands on these workflows, they're all available inside my school community. You'll get access to all my downloadable NFN automations, email templates, business SOPs, and everything you need to skill your outreach properly. If you found this video useful, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. And if there's something specific you want me to cover, drop a comment below and let me know. I'll see you in the next one.